So I haven't put out a video for a while, and this mainly boils down to my current passion for video games. I still love video games and constantly play them too, but my mood for playing video games has suddenly changed. I went playing lots of Rainbow Six Siege and a lot of Rocket League, among other games, to focusing more on what I like to call daily life video games. That phrase may sound a little bit weird, but stick with me a bit. What is a daily life video game? Well, I like to think of them as games that need or warrant a constant maintenance to keep going. Games that have you log in daily, not because of a daily re login reward, but because there is something that makes you hop in for a daily life, play as your virtual self, and relax. So today I want to explore this growing category. I am your host, Size Matters, and today's video is about the daily life video game category. What is it? So let's get some confusion out of the way. Daily life video game is not a simulation. Yes, same games can be in the daily life category, but they're not mutually exclusive, and you will see why shortly. Daily life video games are also not an immersive sim. Immersive sims are those games that you see like Dishonored or Deus Ex, where you are immersed as a character archetype and are placed to solve missions or situations in your own signature using that character archetype. So let's try to define this daily life category. Games like Minecraft or Stardew Valley fall into this category. They have the player jump into the world and maintain a living space, hold off a life through work and construction. So the daily life of our real life, but in a digital form. Hmm. Okay. But these are not the only daily life category video games. MMOs fall into this category of daily lives. In Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, Fighting is not the only thing you could do. You can also blacksmith, cook, sightsee, treasure hunt, and many other activities that do not involve combat. They have the player create objects that can be sold on the board and essentially go about their play session as a worker of the land, just like in the outside world, albeit with a little bit more exciting and more recognition than your outside life. MMOs also have houses or apartments that can be purchased. Players can get married, players can enlist on a grand company and become militant commanders, play at a casino, play the lottery, or just lounge around. Things that can, on paper, be done by an everyday person, but that are somewhat difficult for the everyday Joe to accomplish. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. So we can say that one requirement of the daily life video game category is a game that allows you to do in-game activities that are in a sense available in the outside world but are not easily accessible or accomplished by your everyday person at any given time. Another game that follows this well is The Sims. It is literally an individual managing the lives of other people doing everyday things like working, sleeping, showering, eating. You may be thinking, if we take the previous as a rule, then almost any game could be in the daily life category video game. Well, not really. You see, if you play Super Smash Bros, and you can't really Jigglypuff rest a person in real life or have them fall off a platform and still be well and healthy, neither can you be like in Destiny and go to Mars and fight alien warriors with any sort of weapon. Well, not yet at least. This is good. This helps us narrow down what the meaning of the daily life video game category is. So far, video games that fall into the daily life category are about number one, a game that allows you or has you do activities in game that have counterparts in real life, but that are not easily done in real life. In addition to this, I want to add that many, but not all, are mundane things you do in real life. Working as a cook in Final Fantasy XIV is fun, even for the individual that might have just come off an 8 hour shift from flipping burgers. Number two, the activities that the game has you do have real life counterparts. You can plant wheat farms just as well in Minecraft as you would in real life, but you can't hop in a car and fly into a soccer ball. If we go off Dr. Yi's research of the motivation of play in online games, there are subcomponents that gamers can fall into, and gamers can fall into multiple subcomponents simultaneously. There are three subcomponents achievement, social, and immersion. Each one breaks down into smaller and smaller components. Using these as a baseline, games in the daily life category rely heavily, but not exclusively, in the escapism subcomponent under immersion. 
the daily life video game category aims to relax, escape from real life, and avoid real life problems under the escapism component. With some elements of self-disclosure and progress held with the daily life video game category, this is based off Dr. Yi's modified theory. Alright, alright, we're getting closer to defining the daily life video game category. But not all daily life games have to be about simple safe actions. There are adrenaline pumping games in this category. Enter DayZ. Well, not only DayZ, games heavily inspired by DayZ like Rust or Ark Survival Evolved are in a sense daily life video games. In DayZ, you must scour the land, surviving, hunting, looting, and self-maintenance are all part of the game. Things like eating food, staying warm, finding a home or are those things that you must do in real life but that Daisy has you do in the virtual world. For Daisy, its real life main selling point is the experience of living off the land, moment to moment. Daisy requires you to be you in the zombie apocalypse. Games like Ark Survival Evolved and Rust take this a step further by having you build bases or in Ark's case have a pet dinosaur. This seems counterintuitive. Why would a scenario like the end of humanity be something that appeals to the escapism and in general a place to relax? Well, Sabrina Sogard from the Alborg University says that in the context of the post-apocalyptic, quote, in the sense, we return to the theory that apocalypse is not necessarily the end of the world, but more an ending of the world that once was and the beginning of a new world. Here we see another element to the category of the daily life video game, that is, the setting of our daily lives. It's not only about living, breathing, and being ourselves in in-game, but also about setting it to see ourselves in it. There are other zombie survival games, like The Last of Us, that is not our story, that is a someone else's story, someone else's story we are experiencing. As to why the post-apocalyptic appeals to us in the post-apocalyptic fantasy of our daily life video game category, James Berger of the University of Minnesota writes that, quote, Apocalyptic desires coincide with a total critique of the world, a critique that annuls any chance of reform, but the apocalyptic desire is a longing also for the aftermath, for the new Jerusalem, and for the frustrated humanist anarchist vision. It is important to note that the game in the daily life video game category rarely goes past the first layer of the post-apocalyptic, that is, the demise of mankind, as based off the theory of taxonomy of the post-apocalyptic by Brian Graham. Lastly, I want to make the distinction between the daily life video game category and the simulation genre. Some popular simulation games are Euro Truck Simulator, Roller Crystal Tycoon, Arma, among others. Although these games can fall into the daily life video game category, they also force the player to take the role of a specific person, be that of the bus driver, the theme park owner, or a soldier. These can seem like daily life video games, but they deny the player the chance for them to express themselves in-game as they would in real life. The expressions in questions are that of a lifestyle, of a job choice, or morality. But let us review what a game has to do to fall into the daily life video game category. Number 1. A game that has you eat, sleep, or work out of leisure or necessity, notwithstanding to advance the story, can be placed in the daily life category. Number 2. Games in this category must have activities in-game that have available real life counterparts, although the in-game activities do have real life counterparts. These real life counterparts are difficult to achieve or can be rarely performed in contrast to their in-game occurrence. Number 3. You are allowed to express yourself as an individual in-game as you would in real life. And number 4. It's not only about living, breathing, or being yourself in a virtual world, but it is also about a fantasy about all those activities but in a different setting, be it in a fantasy world, post-apocalyptic land, or a voxel pixel infinite earth. It's no wonder why so many of these video games are or were hugely popular. Yes, people enjoy a good story or gameplay, 
but it seems what people want more is to simply have themselves teleported to another world. So, the next time you think that you may not have a life, you're wrong. You have multiple lives. My name is Size Matters, and I hope you enjoyed this video.